last summer, uh, living in Lancaster County, we had an interesting event where we had about 12 inches of rain in about three hours. And, you know, roads were closed, and there's actually been several events statewide regarding bad weather. And PennDOT maintains a highway maintenance emergency fund. And I think it's about roughly $20 million for weather-related or emergency project work. And as I said, we had some interesting weather last year that I think put a strain, I'm thinking, on this. And I was informed that the, the cost that, that, that PennDOT had incurred uh, was more than six times the budgeted amount for what we had anticipated. And I was wondering whether maybe you could provide me some you know, because it is, it's one of those, boom, emergencies. Can you maybe give me an idea where you got that funding to make up for, you know, to, to uh, provide for those repairs, bridges, roads, and then how future projects are going to be impacted if, if uh, it seems like it's in particular, it seems to be flooding, it was last year, mm -hmm. how, how we're going to deal with that in the future? Sure. Uh, flooding, we had a historic year last year. It was the highest it's been in, in the last 10 years, and maybe even longer than that. I only looked uh, for the past 10 years. So you are absolutely correct. We do uh, budget about $20 million a year for emergency requests. Sometimes it can go as high as 30, so between 20 and 30. This year we were at $127.5 million. Uh, you know, I, I speak to district executives. They've never seen anything like it. Uh, we hope that this is, you know, uh, an anomaly, an unusual year. Uh, but we are starting to see these rain events. We're starting to see them more often. We're starting to see the intensity increase. And so we have to start planning as if maybe this is not, uh, you know, an unusual blip and maybe this is going to start to become the norm. I hope that's not the case. Uh, what we had to do immediately this year, uh, you know, these are emergency fund requests. These are things that have to be done. They cannot be put off. They uh, are done on an emergency basis. So, of course, we immediately applied for um, FEMA for federal federal reimbursements, we got a portion back from that. That doesn't come automatically. Um, so what we need to plan until it comes, in fact, we won't get those payments. Right now we're up to about 30 million coming back through the federal government, and we won't get those payments for the next few years. Uh, we have our rural commercial route, uh, roads program, which you can see in our budget, uh, that got reduced, and a portion of that reduction is because we took the money uh, reserved uh, for that and moved it over to some of our rural emergency uh, roadways that needed and bridges that needed to be fixed because of the flooding. Uh, I think that was a very good use of that money. And when the federal money comes in, that's the first uh, line item it's going to go to. And we've, we expect that to be fully funded moving forward. Uh, we, had to, we had to borrow from, from projects and delay some projects to get the, the money along. It came from maintenance um, issues. And it's also part of why you see the construction line item has also been reduced. So it was a bunch of different uh, lines that we had to take uh, to make those emergency repairs. And we truly hope that we won't have to do that again next year. But we don't know. Yeah, $100 million, that's, you know, that's a lot. We, we're working with tight budgets. And because I didn't know the answer, I didn't know where, we're, where, where do we need to pull this? Because we, we need to get these roads and bridges, et cetera, rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, changing, changing subjects, um, for about 25 years, I was a member in an organization that helped out Americans with disabilities. And uh, the shared ride program for persons with disabilities is is something that you know that you oversee, and you know it's it's certainly something that's utilized by those people for jobs and to get their health care and, and and you know volunteer whatever. And I was just wondering whether you could provide just a a, a brief overview of where we are with funding levels um, for that program, as well as issues maybe you know living in Lancaster County, you know you go from Wrightsville in York County over to Columbia, or if, if people want to cross county lines. Lines, um, you know what what's being done, and, and you know what happens if, if you know some people have to work evenings. Is there anything being done to help out Americans sure. with disabilities? So maybe maybe just a quick a quick uh, overview of that program. Sure, sure. So first of all, so everyone knows, we provide almost four hundred thousand trips a day for persons. Uh, I'm sorry, a year for persons with disabilities. We provide three point five million shared ride trips. So the shared ride, when we sp speak specifically as 65 and over, the persons with disabilities are under uh, the 65 persons with disabilities. Um, 
as you can see, and I'm sure I'll get into more detail uh, as other questions come come along. We are at a uh, we're, we're at a moment of time where our transit funding is um, really in the balance here, and, and and quite almost at a crisis. And we are going to have to look if the Turnpike litigation. I'm not going to get. Into, I see our time's almost up. If the Turnpike litigation does not get decided in a favorable, it doesn't get decided at all, or in a favorable condition to PennDOT, starting in July July 1st of this year, we're going to st start to make cuts. And part of those cuts will be $10 million that goes to per, uh, you know transit uh, rides for people with disabilities. Uh, it may not be the full $10 million, but that is one of the line items we will have to look at, and most likely a portion of that. And as we know, those are lifelines for those people. It's how they get to work. It's how they earn a living. It's how they improve their quality of life, whether they're going for a haircut, whether they're going to the supermarket, whether they're on dialysis, whether they have a medical condition. And in no way do we want to impact uh, in a negative way how they get around. We know that the majority of of counties, uh, we, we have a, a survey that had over 16 counties saying that the majority of their users have no other way to get around um, when uh, in rural areas where this person with disability transit options as well as shared ride is offered. So it truly is their lifeline and, and we have to figure out how, how we're gonna fund it moving forward. I appreciate the answer. I appreciate you taking the time to be here today. And you're right. There's going to be a lot of other questions about Turnpike, I'll, I'll build on it. Sure. We started it here. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank okay. you, Mr. Chairman. I want to add uh, a comment there talking about the cut uh, to people with disability. Uh, why would the department cut that and not look at raising fees or having, you know, taking money back from mass transit and other areas? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is so critical if you're somebody who has to go to dialysis or a doctor's office with a disability. The first people we should take care of are those rather than, you know, some of the other people who use public transportation. And I'm not putting public transportation down, but to me, instead of cutting those programs, we should be looking at taking money from areas of public transportation and filling that gap in if we get a bad court ruling. Yeah, no, look, uh, people with disabilities is definitely part of our most vulnerable um, you know, uh, residents that, that we serve. Uh, I would say anybody who needs transit to get to dialysis, I mean, that's a life or, or death issue, whether you're a person with disability or not. There's the shared ride system. Uh, we subsidize a large per portion of, of transit for people with disabilities. Uh, it is up to the transit provider to make those decisions of where they make cuts in their operating costs and where they make cuts in their capital program. So we provide the money and then they um, decide, you know, for instance, which fixed routes get, you know, get cut or not, how shared ride and how they service 65 and older. And often that's the only way to keep that population mobile and, and aging in their homes. And there's other, uh, also I would, I would say, you know, life quality decisions. So it, it's very difficult, but trust me, the last, uh, the last decision I want to be impacting is who uh, with a disability gets to get their dialysis uh, on time or a medical appointment or, but you know, I don't want to downgrade, you know, even getting a haircut, even getting, um, you know, to the supermarket to, to feed yourself. Uh, these are all things uh, that, that, that are quite important, even if they don't have a direct, you know, life or death impact. Well, that's why I'm saying is that instead of looking at cutting that program, we should looking at moving dollars from other areas of mass transit to fill that gap. I'm hoping we don't get a bad court ruling but I don't think this General Assembly is into raising the gas tax again to fill any of those holes. Uh, we already see that we have some holes, at, as you talked about earlier in your testimony, with our construction money going down, $200 million less this year than last year. So I'm just concerned as we go through this process that people with disabilities or medical issues, I don't want to see them suffer. Yeah. I think uh, it, we it, don't it, either. But we've the, got to come yeah. up with a solution that does not touch them. We can't deal with what the court ruling does, but we have to, at the state level, make sure that they continue getting the same quality services. So like I said, it, the easy question is, well, do we raise just raise taxes? But I really think the better way is to make sure that the management of our mass transit funds focus on those individuals first who have health issues. So that's all I'm saying is I think we need to work As with we'll those As we'll see, agencies. those transit funds are definitely in peril right now, and there's not enough to go around. So somewhere it, there's 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 going to be cuts, and it's probably going to be across the board. Um, you know, you can't. You can't fund something without uh, taking money away from somewhere else, but happy to continue the conversation. But I agree with you. The last
last thing we want is to negatively impact uh, the transit being provided uh, to people with disabilities.